inverted fifth tuning is all about maximizing accompaniment possibilities. Your left hand can become a groove and harmony machine, playing a combination of bass and rhythm parts, all built around easily accessible chord shapes. By reaching over the melody strings, the left hand opens up and covers a broad range of pitches and is capable of forming lots of easily fingered chord shapes. All you have to do is let your arm move up and down to follow the chord shapes that your hand naturally wants to make. Inverted fifths also compacts a wide range of notes into one hand position, uh, two and a half octaves on only five strings, and just over three octaves with six strings. The most useful chord tones all fall within easy reach. Uh, even down near the nut, where the bass notes sound the best, but the frets are spread out. Let's first look at the basic major and minor triads. Usually chords played in a low range on the bass or on a keyboard will sound muddy, like this. But in the inverted fifths tuning, uh, it moves the third up an octave like this spreads the voicing out so that all the notes sound clear. Uh, even with a low bass note, if I move this down, even down to that low G, since I only have to make a two fret reach, when I let my arm relax, I can easily form the shape, keep my hand nice and open with a minimum of finger bending, and I can also apply energy from my arm and I can sustain the notes without my fingers getting in each other's way. Part of that's due to the positioning of the instrument, more vertical and up inside the shoulder, and part of that is due to the positioning of the arm, which allows my hand to form the shape naturally. For minor chords, you just substitute the third finger one fret lower instead of the pinky. And again, the voicing is spread out because the minor third is up on top. If I want to play these chords with a lower bass note, all I have to do is substitute the pinky down here. And again, my arm raises up so that I can form the shape of the chord with minimal wrist bending. Those are major chords, and here's a minor. Here's some other chord shapes that are based on those major and minor triads. So here's a major sixth, a minor sixth, uh, diminished, augmented, uh, an add nine chord, and a root five octave power chord. I can play those on the second bass string as well. So there's major sixth, minor sixth, etc. Uh, only the diminished chord really involves a lot of finger bending just because of the way the second finger bends in this way. Otherwise, they're all very open, natural shapes. And if you allow your arm to move up and down, you can form those shapes really naturally. And the fingers stay out of each other's way. If you're familiar with the way chords look on the fourths melody side, then you'll see that uh, these chords in the inverted fifths on the bass side have the same geometry. They're just inversions. Uh, by that I mean that the lowest note of the chord on the bass side will be the highest note on the melody side. So here's a C major chord on the left hand, and here's that same chord shape on the melody side. I can also play a C major with the E on top. Uh, on the melody side, and that puts the E on the bottom on the bass side. Or with the G up on top on the melody side and on the bottom on the bass side. You can use this parallel geometry to find chords really easily when you're trying to arrange tunes. Uh, the basic fingering for most of the seventh chords is one, three, two. Uh, so I'm gonna play major seven, a seventh, a minor seventh, and a diminished seventh. Uh, and I can play those same uh, basic shapes on the lowest bass string 
or I can move the um, the third up an octave, so I can play it like this. So here's a major seventh, which uses the pinky, the seventh, like that. Uh, the minor seventh is a little bit more of a stretch again because you've got to bend your second finger in, and then the diminished seventh like that. And again, if you allow your arm to move so that your hand can more naturally form the shapes of the chords, that gives you the ability to introduce hand energy in addition to your finger energy, which is great for building rhythm parts out of the chords. And let me just show you a few more chords that are based on this same kind of really open natural hand shape. Here's a 13th. Here's a 7 sus 4. And a 4 note power chord. Root 5 octave and then the 5th up on top of that. Now all these easy to reach chord shapes are great, but they're only half the story. What makes inverted fifth such a powerful accompaniment tuning is the kinds of parts that you can build out of these chord structures. And also the way that the voices of the chords lead into each other in certain kinds of progressions. Now here's some different ways to play some of the chords I've shown you so far. Here's a, a minor seventh uh, leading into a seventh of the four chord like this. This technique divides the chord up into bass notes and the rest of the chord, relying on hand motion to generate the rhythm back and forth between them. You can also play really nice sustained arpeggios like this. One of my favorite techniques is to alternate the root and the fifth of the chord with the rest of the chord uh, to form a great driving arpeggio rhythm. You can also just supplement a bass part with a few chord tones thrown in here and there. Or you can play a more funky syncopated rhythm uh, just using chords. And I love the way that in a progression like Autumn Leaves, 
the top voices of the chords lead right into each other while the bass notes are moving in larger intervals. The important thing to remember is to keep your instrument up at a high enough angle that you can rotate your arm freely at the shoulder without having to push your arm forward or pull it back. Now, having the instrument lean back towards your shoulder like this is a very important part of this because it allows your wrist to stay straight. It also makes it easier to see the board. You want to keep your hands open as much as possible, open and relaxed. An open hand is a free hand. Happy tapping. <laughs>